big, serious claims here, all of which I am 100% prepared to own. I could not stand behind the stuff that I'm about to say any more firmly. I will own this stuff concretely because holy shit. Yes, this may be dubbed as an album review, but the science behind the band that recently released Letters to Existence is owed so much more than that. The short introduction to understand the things I'm about to say is this. This band, October Noir, it could not be any more obvious that their main, main influence, just like tons of doom bands out there that exist to pay tribute to Black Sabbath, so much so that really, there's an entire genre dedicated to that, which is doom. But in this case, the main influence is a band who is also very heavily influenced by Sabbath typo negative. But you know what, man? What's taking place here in the case of October Noir is something, number one big claim, that is so much more legitimately a tribute to typo than, I'm gonna say it, any Doom band has managed to pull off for Sabbath. And believe me, Sabbath-inspired Doom, I live and breathe that shit. But what makes this different is that, like, you don't even have to necessarily be a fan of Typo or October Noir to have the same exact mind-blown reaction than you would to some kind of, like, viral video that shows something miraculous. Because consider for a second amazing things, just amazing things in general in this world. Recently, it was reported that a space rover of ours collided with an asteroid that was able to obtain a piece of the material from the asteroid that it was made of and bring it back to Earth. Earth. That is fucking insane. Or the fact that it rains diamonds on Neptune. And the following, look, I am being serious. I mean this. The following ranks up there as being just as marvelous and mind blowing. So whether you're just a casual music listener or a music head, it is fucking insane how exact October Noir matches Typo Negative. Uh, so much that I think the guys in October need to be studied by friggin' NASA with the main question simply being, how the fuck did they do it? I mean, think about that. How is it possible that one band can be inspired by and match the sound so closely to someone else that like, good luck to any normie trying to discern between the two of them if you throw a bunch of songs at them, you know? No fucking way they'd ever be able to tell the difference. But ultimately, it is truly just like, I keep saying it, but I have to. It is mind blowing. Uh, fucking amazing how perfectly October's pulled it off. Here's big claim number two. With much fear and trepidation, some theorize that a force exists that is so powerful, enough power possessed that it has the ability to quote the late American scientist Egon Spengler, Try to imagine all life as you know it stopping instantaneously and every molecule in your body exploding at the speed of light. I'm talking about the great AI. That's right, artificial intelligence. AI is now able to create new original music by your favorite artist where it's extremely, extraordinarily difficult to tell the difference. And here, I'm gonna fucking say it. These guys do typo better than even artificial intelligence can fucking A. So I guess that leaves only one thing to say to AI, huh? AI, check me, bitch. So final miscellaneous note before I tell you about the songs. I have only ever heard one other band that I think can match another band so closely to the point where if you were to hear it and not know it's an entirely different group of people, you'd say, hey, that's not Black Sab. Fifth, is it? And it's Stone Jesus from the Ukraine, a stoner band that can do, can do, they don't do it all the time, but they can do Ozzy Era Sabbath, really specifically the first album in Paranoid, so friggin' well. You could take the most refined Black Sabbath historian and have them all nervous, thinking silently, uh, is this some kind of demo or something I've never heard? But. Yes, it's worth noting that while October Noir is 90% typo, there is around 10% remaining that is uniquely October. And that's another part of what makes the listening experience for October so fun. You know, you'll find these Easter eggs that make it just a fucking fun listening experience. So there you go. All right. 
please understand the following. It's very, very important and I need to say it loud and clearly. The typo comparisons I point out are in no way meant to be conveyed as derogatory. I do not mean it in that sense, but rather purely just holy shit and bewilderment. Because there is nothing wrong in my opinion, nothing wrong with another band sounding as close to someone else at all. And I'll go back yet again to the doom genre for Black Sabbath. You know the biggies who practiced it. St. Vitus, Bongzillo, Weed Eater, Sleep, and a thousand mile long list that goes on. And in case there's anybody out there who's never listened to Typo Negative before or October Noir, I've done this in a previous video, but I'll do it here for good measure too. Proof of my claim in a quick side by side. So okay friends, a quick rundown of each track off the latest album, Letters to Existence by October Noir. Spring, beginning with a brief ambient intro, which already sounds like typo. This introductory piece is what I can only imagine MDMA feels like. It's this tremendously uplifting, positive sounding melody, just encouraging, comforting. It's like you've just arrived in heaven and a voice is saying, every single thing imaginable is good and fine. Awesome opener, I could see him walking on stage to it on a tape. Endless lovely, immediately Peter Steele's vocals show up and then immediately after that, it's full on signature type O negative. And it continues the uplifting and comforting tone with just these amazing, beautiful sound like textures. The way people describe DMT, you know, when they break through and they see this unthinkably radiant beauty. Uh, and then the middle of the song breaks into a sort of like jam, sort of similar in like what, structure to the part in Hammer of the Gods off Death Red Sabaoth. Danzig because it splits from the tempo that ran through most of the song so far uh, and at the end there's a few chord changes that make it even more uplifting like and fucking inspiring if you can believe it a halo hung from horns so it starts with some piano chords that don't seem to fall in line with like the keys of the song but it's cool because it's not what you might expect and then it's got this badass kind of like swing you can really lock into it and, uh, and it's pretty heavy too you know, sort of whispery but raspy, almost like scary sounding vocals during the verses. Uh, and here's an example of some uncharacteristic of typo stuff. Shredding. It's got a guitar solo that kind of shreds. Now, important. Sometimes you hear melodies that, yes, they are from typo songs, but again, it is clear that it is absolutely not some sort of ripoff. There are minor variants to them assuring you that it is done in tribute. It's not exact. And in this song, you can hear keys near the end of the middle-ish that I would argue, and I think I'm right, are paying tribute to the last riff in block number one. Uh, let's say it's inspired by, and you might even hear something, I don't know, man, that reminds you at the end of my girlfriend's girlfriend. There's points in the song where like spoken word is done in a sort of medieval type of accent. Nah, it's fucking cool. Forever Haunt. 
Okay, the female vocals, as far as I know, they're not from a member of the Benson Hoist lesbian choir, but they could be. And I think there's another instance of one of those tributish melodies in Die With Me. Also, it's got the end of the Summer Breeze cover, the Sets Me On Fire part. But man, like, these tribute parts are placed so goddamn well that like, you know what their placements are as good as? Remember on 101 Proof Pantera when during Cowboys, Dimebag goes into Cat Scratch Fever? It's like that, it's like that grade well placed. Deja View, it's got a real heavy, doomy opening with a haunting feel when, uh, is that a Benson Hoist member's voice in the background? Uh, I don't know, again, it could be. But like, I don't know, the song makes you feel like you're inside a castle and it's just, it's very like, it's dramatic sounding, really, really dramatic. Summer to autumn, all right, movie time. This is like the album's seasonally themed opener. It's kind of a shorter, uh, what, interlude, you might call it. After the intro, there's this big, big orchestral part that sounds like, you know, it, it belongs in some kind of like surreal sci-fi action kind of flick because this is an example of the band's soundscapes on display and the textures being so fucking just huge and grand, you know? You'll know what I mean when you hear it. Clench. I kind of hear a little bit of Be My Druidus in it. It's got some guitar riffing that like, here's another example where something happens that seems a little not so typo. Uh, maybe it's the picking style that's a little different, but I, I don't know, it's cool though. And I think he says low tide a bunch of times, which it makes me think of, you know, the ocean, Jersey Shore, typos from Jersey, tourniquet. This might be one of my faves on the album because of the vocal melody in the chorus. But okay, so the tribute parts, right near the beginning, I don't know, I think I'm about to hear blood and fire, but then I'm like, nope, I can hear the end of We Hate Everyone. It's another track where after those typo songish parts, you're just fucking amazed by the number of layers and valleys and textures and like, a note on those vocal melodies in the chorus, right? It's an Easter egg. It seems to break what you might have ever heard from Peter Steele, uh, specifically the lines during the, uh, I don't know, wait, is, the, is it the verse or the chorus? But the melody is sung pretty uniquely. Again, though, you're just hearing it and you're like, I can't believe this is a group of entirely different people than Typo Negative. And also, uh, as for unique, it's got an organ, I think, or is it a B3, uh, during a soft part, and it sounds pretty only October, and it shows up at the very end, too. Uh, it's fucking cool. Track nine, for honor. It starts out with a guitar part that actually kind of sounds pretty Van Halen-y, but then right back into Bloody Kisses, man. It's got a nice, comforty sounding kind of melody, kind of an acoustic sounding part too. Just some like soothing, sort of dramatic sounding soft parts. You could maybe describe this as an epic on the album. There's a part where he's singing, give me those healing somethings, and that kind of reminds me of Kenny's lines at the end of these three things, which, man, gun to my head, might be my favorite typo negative song. Flash Paper Matches. It starts out with this cool kind of like analog sounding like cassette tape sounding acoustic. Uh, it's part of the intro, but then it's got this kind of doomy like brooding section in the beginning. And like, you know, if their sound along with all of its layers and textures or some kind of candy, it'd be like one of those round ball cotton candy lollipops, you know? And like, if Typo was predominantly green and sometimes amberish shades on top of blackness, October's that, certainly, but there are also lots of emerald greens and shiny pastels that make it seem like just fucking very, very dreamy. But yeah, so the cassette tape sounding guitar shows up again and it's cool and then there's this pretty badass sounding like sludgy riff that shows up on its own near the end-ish, right before it's paired with a kind of like organ and uh, it's a melody that kind of reminds me of Killer Clowns from Outer Space. She's Gone, the last proper track on the album. It's got like a slower BPM and once again, it's just kind of like a nice soothing song that's mostly a relief or a release and you know, it's got some of that tension also sprinkled in, but like, I guess you'd imagine that, right? With a title like She's Gone, Winter. 
as you might expect, winter. It's a sort of outro that doesn't really like feel great. And it's got this kind of like waltzing, almost like, a, I don't know, maybe some might call it militaristic sounding. It's a slightly marching beat, you know? Uh, uh, you know, uh, scratch that, that's not accurate. But it sounds like that uh, Revenant or something movie, you know, remember that one with uh, DiCaprio out in the snow? But oh yeah, when only the piano and the vocals are heard, it's got this kind of like narration sort of thing, and I'll, I'll let you discover what he says in your own. Uh, and finally, there's this cool kind of like, I don't know, secret track at the end that to me, uh, sounds kind of like carnival, Russian, Tetrisy sort of music. Well, my friends, there you go. At this point, I think I've said enough, and I will close it up with this. October Noir, for the amazing feat that you've, I'm not even gonna call it produced, I'm calling it accomplished, and I mean that from the heart. Amazing feat. The first guy to run a mile in under four minutes, people climbing Mount Everest, letters to existence, and the music that you play, you've accomplished something truly amazing. And I can only imagine that Peter Steele is looking down from heaven, and he is proud of you. Okay, maniacs, I'm done. If you like the video, maybe you can give it a thumbs up, or if you just like hearing somebody bullshit about heavy metal music, cool, man, hit that fucking subscribe button. Big congrats to Nina Himes, who won the I Am contest, to go down and hang with them at the end of this month in New Orleans. Have a blast, Nina. We'll see you next time on Concrete Spew, but until then, stay cool, stay heavy, and stay metal, my friends.